Speaking of Twitter, what do you think of the news that's gone around since Elon Musk has purchased Twitter that they're going to start selling for $20 a month the blue check mark? <laughs> Even people who already have it who yes. are distinguished, they will have to begin paying, again, purportedly, $20 a month to continue to maintain the status of blue check mark. Well, then, and I just saw this morning on somebody tweeted on Twitter. Stephen King, I think it was, wrote, well, I'm not going to pay that. And Elon Musk wrote him back, well, what, what about $8? Now, Elon, I thought Elon Musk was supposed to be Richard and King Solomon, and he's out here negotiating the price of a check mark on Twitter with noted authors. Um, I've got a check mark. I told you how I got my check mark, right? But it's been several years. Do you remember? Or did you care then? Uh, it was, I believe, someone from the UK. If I remember correctly. Yes. And, yeah. and here's the, the, but the deal for the younger listeners, the newer people is that I wondered why, well, I didn't wonder Stacy wondered because when I got Twitter was, she set it up for me. I think when we got the website and then every once in a while we'd be in the car and I'd say, well, why don't you tweet that? But I never actually tweeted anything myself or even went to the screen myself until I had about 60,000 followers. And then I can't remember what instigated me to do it, but I think it was when we started the podcast. Then I started getting, so I've got the Twitter here on my computer, right? Because I don't have the smartphone and never shall. So then Stace noticed that somebody, when she had set up my Twitter account, somebody had gotten Jim Cornette at Jim Cornette and put my picture up and they had like 20 followers or whatever. And so she she contacted or whatever the customer service that you do for Twitter and said, well, why, why is this guy allowed to impersonate my husband? And it, it, can't he have this or why can't he have this or whatever the fuck? And you know what they, they said? Well, can you can your husband prove he's him? And she said, well, the goddamn guy that I'm talking about didn't have to. Why should he have to? So she just made it at the Jim Cornette, which is what it is, and bypassed that. But then people started wondering and asked me, why aren't you verified? You are who you say you are. And you have, at that point, I had a hundred and whatever thousand followers. And I still can't figure out, I, I know there's a way you can go and see the list, but I'm not going to fucking count. But I'd love to know how many people I blocked, because I block Republicans as a matter of course, and smart asses, and there's so many of those, I probably block more people than anybody else on fucking Twitter. But anyway, say, so why don't you have the check mark? I don't care about the check mark, but uh, well, what do you have to do to get the check mark? So. I can't remember whether it was Stacy or whether by that point it was somebody whoever uh, they might have been the young man that was helping me with some technological stuff at that point before he got a real job. They checked and they said, well, you got to do this and that and the other thing. And I'm like, what the fuck? And or you can pay a company that will verify, that will submit to Twitter whatever they consider to be valid documentation to verify you. And it costs like, I can't remember, a few hundred dollars, several hundred dollars, whatever. And so I said something on the show about it. I said, can you imagine they actually have businesses, people that are in business to talk to Twitter and for a fee, they will get Twitter to verify that you are indeed the person you are. It's a big work. It's a big scam. And I made fun of it. And then some guy from the United Kingdom said, well, I'm one of those people that does this. And I got such a kick out of your goddamn dissertation on how this is such a big work and a big scam that I'm going to get you done for free. And that's what he did. <laughs> he got my check mark for free. I don't know how he did it. I don't know who he talked to. And, you know, I think at this point, everybody knows it's me. If it, the check mark goes away, I don't care. Will you pay if, $20 a month for it? Of course not. And I, I wouldn't pay $20 a month for fucking Twitter. It's goddamn, it would, it, 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 everybody's upset about Elon Musk. And I know Mick Foley's already deleted himself or whatever. I have not had time because I've been signing action figures. 
and it's not been my week to be appointed to watch him. I haven't had time to keep up with Elon Musk, positive or negative, good, bad, or indifferent. And, but people are up in our, if he lets Donald Trump back on Twitter, then we know he's a piece of shit. And if he doesn't, I could give a fuck because most of the people on Twitter aren't real anyway. And we've pretty much already recognized who all the real people are on Twitter that we know and we like and we interact with. It's a picture of a person with a some type of name that you doesn't involve 16 numbers. And they've got more than seven followers. Hey, if I can ask you about that, though, that's one of the arguments that Elon Musk or people who uh, believe in what he's doing here are making is that by doing this, by trying to get more people verified, you reduce the number of bots, but also by charging for it. Because remember, Twitter doesn't make money. By charging for it, Twitter will It's actually... not my fault they had a fucking bad idea to do something that don't make money. Well, that was going to be my, my second part of this. They need to make some money. They're hoping this will be something that will generate the revenue because enough people will be desperate to be verified that they'll pay for this. Should Twitter be a utility? Oh, good God. No, a utility should be... <sighs> should have some element of necessary function, don't you think? A telephone company, uh, electric company, gas company. Direct verified um, communication. Hold on. Well, but you no, know, you can make that claim for internet, Wi-Fi, but not for fucking Twitter. I mean, you know, it's not like that anybody's passing along fucking sensitive information except in the wrestling business and all the insiders spill their guts it's not like <laughs> you're you know telling your kid learn at home make sure they've got they're hooked up to twitter so they can do their home schooling no and somebody well when stacy told me said mick deleted his twitter because of um and of course remember mick was the first one to go home when when vince screwed brett and mick is He's a and he was the first one to come back after Vince screwed Brett. Well, because he because he was actually the only one besides family members that left, so he kind of had to come back unless he stayed. But he's just incredibly nice. But I look at that like, why am I? You know, I I like Twitter in terms of being able to send stuff out to the people that follow us on here's our new clips or here's what's going on or retweet some of the funny things that they send or some of the classic wrestling clips. So that's, you know, but it's not like that you couldn't do without fucking Twitter in your life for fuck's sake. It would probably save you about me. It'd save me about 30 or 45 minutes a day when I get up in the morning and scroll through everything and see what's going on. And then I, I know you're going to be tweeting something later on. So I'll come back to it every so often, but a lot of people are on here a lot. Oh, yeah. And they could probably, you know, find other hobbies, but it's not a necessity of life. And that's the thing is, I told Stace, I said, well, if Mick has deleted his account because he's afraid that Elon Musk is going to be a fucking, you know, a greedy billionaire and let Trump or criminals or liars such as him back on here to spread bullshit and cause trouble for the whole country. I can see him taking a stand, but the thing is, that's kind of like there being a shitty newspaper and you decided not to write a letter to the editor of that newspaper telling him what a shitty fucking newspaper he's running. That would be, if, if, to me, what, what are they going to kick Mick off Twitter for knocking Twitter? How would that be received by the general populace? Talk about the McMahons. You want to be mad at people? Talk about the people you actually know. <laughs> How about that? But but that that's the thing is, I would rather if he puts Donald Trump back on or, you know, lets this right-wing bullshit go on that is, you know, actually now causing, well, already has started causing violence. But besides that, it just makes these simple-minded fucks believe that there's a goddamn you know, emergency going on in the country that they have to go out in their tinfoil hats and their revolutionary war outfits and right the wrong. That's dangerous. That's yelling fire in a crowded theater. That shouldn't be allowed. But if, if but if you can, if you have any validation whatsoever in a, in, in the fact that a statement you're making is truthful, 
then that should be allowed, but not just shit just to stir up these dipshits that have already caused enough fucking trouble. I think, unfortunately, Twitter, for a lot of lonely people, has become a life validator. A lot of people who have no communication with the outside world don't leave their house. It's become something where all of a sudden they have a powerful voice. Now, of course, if you met this now person... Now, wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. See, now you just started describing me, and then you took a left turn. Well, I wasn't describing you. I wasn't... <laughs> But people you don't, tweet, don't but associate you have a, with people, no, never but, leave the house. But you have a healthy relationship with Twitter. The people who have hundreds of thousands of tweets and they're nobodies, they're just yearning for contact. That's where it's like, okay, these people have unhealthy relationships with this thing and it's become a life validator and it's sad. And then you have people who use it for dissemination and we're guilty of that too. We use it to get out our shows and various things. Me, I just like it for reading baseball news and politics news and economic news, but that's just me. I don't, I, I don't understand if, if, if Twitter just vanished tomorrow, people would still be able to function in their lives and we would still do this show and other things would still happen. It's, it's like you said, it's a place to advertise things and send out funny you know, memes, as the kids say, and things like that. But this is not a crucial lifeline in in this country or any other civilization, is it, these days? I think to some of the lonely people, they think it is. It's their only... Well, this is for all the lonely people who tweet way more than they should. Don't give up until you... Vonnegut wrote that book and it was brilliant about the guy who ran for president saying that he would cure loneliness. <laughs> And that was it. You know, it was, how do you cure loneliness? But he promised it. And it is one of our great problems. You know what? I'll tell you what, I'll never vote for that motherfucker. I have been waiting my whole life to be rich enough and successful enough and old enough and bored enough to sit at home and be nice and lonesome. And nobody's going to take that away from me. Well, there's something different between lonesome and lonely, wouldn't you say? Well, I guess there is, because it doesn't make sense. It's for all the lonesome people. It just doesn't fit. Lonely does fly off the tongue better. 